All right, so one of the questions that I get a lot is which is my favorite older flagship phone. It is definitely the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. They do have a standard Note 10, which is much smaller if you want something that you can one hand easily. But what I like about this phone is design wise, it has aged really well. So here's a Galaxy S22 Ultra, the newest one. You can see they look pretty similar as far as the front and then the back, the Note 10 Plus, I think still looks really uh, good, especially with this cool color. So design wise, it's one of my favorite. I think it has aged really well. And uh, there's a lot to like about this phone. Still has a beautiful display. It's 1440p, just absolutely gorgeous display here. Uh, 6.8 inches. I think the only thing that might feel a little bit dated with this phone is it has 60 hertz. You know, there's no 90 or 120 hertz. But I really, really like the display on here. The whole high refresh rate thing is not necessary for, I think, the average consumer anyway. The newest iPhones don't even have them. Uh, like the iPhone 13 and the mini series, those don't even have them. So it's not really that necessary. It's not a huge thing. Uh, I think if you're a tech enthusiast, then, you know, of course, it's going to be a big thing. But other than that, um, this phone has aged really well. All of the bells and whistles are on here still. Samsung desktop support on here. Adobe Atmos, reverse wireless power sharing. It pretty much has everything that the new S22 Ultra has essentially now this phone and it's the same thing with a lot of these older phones is that this phone is running android 12 when you are 4.1 the actual latest software but it won't get the android 13 update it's currently in its security patch uh stage it does get three uh, years of security patches though which is really sweet what makes this phone stand out is that it's still super powerful if you check out the gaming test it plays any game at high settings still which is very impressive um, and also, it has SD card support, which the newer, uh, you know, flagship phones, you know, just in general, do not have. Uh, and also, what makes this a really sweet deal, around 350 to 400 bucks, you get SD card support, 256 gigs of internal storage, and 12 gigs of RAM. And then, of course, you get the S Pen, of course, and all that good stuff. So, uh, it is a really solid uh, performer. Like, there's nothing that this phone can't do. I think the only thing about this phone uh, it doesn't have a headphone jack uh, which I do have a phone for that if you guys want an older phone with a headphone jack um, but yeah so the Note 10 Plus is just one of my favorites um, so definitely if you want to see more in depth check that out and also the cameras I think what a lot of people sleep on these phones I think the image quality still looks extremely good if you check out my comparison uh, image quality still looks great on these phones as far as the colors and detail uh, these older phones actually do a pretty good job now yes the newer phones are gonna have more fancier hundred times zoom and all that stuff but if we're talking about just shots in general uh, these cameras still look really really good uh, in my opinion so I think video and everything looks super solid on actually a lot of these older flagship phones as well too so this is overall just a really good package as far as you know getting the value for your money also great battery life all day battery life as well too now the note 20 ultra is also a very interesting phone because it's the actual uh, the last real galaxy note phone and my only thing with this phone is that it's still kind of expensive around like seven to eight hundred dollars pretty much depending on if it's unlocked or locked or uh, the condition um, but yeah, so I'll put the cheapest ones down below. I usually get majority of my phones refurbished or used. The Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is very impressive. It's very similar to the Galaxy uh, Note 10 Plus, but this phone has SD card support, but this phone has the 120 hertz as well. So the screen is su super silky smooth. It feels extremely fast. It does have the Snapdragon 865 chip, so it's still basically blazing fast it plays any game like i said high settings um the note 20 ultra though is definitely a pretty decent deal for anybody that doesn't want to spend a ton of money and you still get that really fancy camera setup as far as like the 50 times hybrid zoom and all that stuff it's got the 108 megapixel lens so it takes some really high quality detailed shots on here it has you know, the really fancy camera setup. So if you're really into pictures, I think you'll really like uh, this phone. You don't have to spend, you know, that $1,200 to get a Galaxy S22 Ultra. Um, you can get this phone and it still have all the fancy bells and whistles, high refresh rate, uh, and also SD card support, which the 
newer you know s22 ultra does not have uh, so i really like this phone but like i said definitely really expensive but i think down the line it's worth it this phone will get android 13 as well too which is really sweet um so yeah the note 20 ultra is a super solid phone great battery life and like i said just an extremely powerful phone in general so if you're looking for a phone and you just want like a really good camera but you don't want to spend that crazy money definitely check this phone out um so one interesting thing is the galaxy s10 plus so the galaxy s10 plus is a very interesting device because it has everything that the note has uh besides the s pen but this phone has the headphone jack so if you're a diehard headphone jack user uh man you'll really like the galaxy s10 plus this is an extremely solid phone actually um the more i use it i always get really impressed uh, with this device as far as speed wise it has the same snapdragon 855 chip sd card support um it's just a really solid performer and i like the size of this phone i like the look um you might like this look more than the boxier note look as well too but this is extremely solid phone also really good camera on here as well too um it's just a really impressive phone in general as well which is something that i really like great cameras great screen 1440p plays games at really fast settings. Um, it has all the bells and whistles. Again, the Samsung desktop support, reverse wireless charging, all that good stuff. And uh, this is a really solid performer and it's very cheap as well too. You can find it for close to around the two, uh, I think it's 260 uh, range. So it's a little ex on the expensive side, but it's, I think this phone is definitely worth it. It's also in the same boat as the Note 10 Plus as far as software, Android 12, uh, One UI 4.1 will be the last update for uh, that phone. And then it, it is uh, currently in the security patch stages as well too. All right, so the S10e and the S10. The S10e is probably one of my favorite phones as well too for anybody that wants a more compact experience. Uh, both these phones have the Snapdragon 855. They both have a really great displays. The S10 actually has a 1440p display the S10 has a 1080p, the S10e has a 1080p display, but they both still look really good. They both have the punch hole. They both have the headphone jack at the bottom. They both have SD card support. Um, they're extremely fast phones gaming wise, performance wise, running the uh, One UI 4.1. is They still run like crazy and they actually both still have all the bells and whistles as well too as far as Samsung desktop support, NFC, Adobe Atmos, reverse wireless charging, all that good stuff. And like I said, these phones are extremely comfortable as far as somebody who has smaller hands and needs to one hand a phone. Very comfortable as far as the uh, screen sizes on here. And um, yeah, these two phones are great. They take the same basically shots. The only thing about the S10 is that the S10 has a telephoto and the S10e does not. But man, these take some really, really great uh, photos still. Um, so yeah, so it doesn't matter. You could literally buy any of these phones and if you want to take great photos in general These phones will take really good photos. That's what I like about these older Samsung devices here um, But yeah, if you're looking for something more compact Then definitely check out an S10e or S10. These are also super cheap around the $200 price point So you guys can see how cheap these phones are you are still getting glass and metal premium design premium screen headphone jack, SD card support. Um, these phones, all of these phones are actually gonna do a lot better performance wise than most of your mid-range and budget phones. So something like a Galaxy A53 5G, like the newest mid-ranger, uh, the A55 chip will play games much better than that phone. Uh, so performance wise, if you're a gamer, go for something with a Snapdragon 855. Man, you will be impressed at the performance and nine times out of 10, it's gonna be cheaper for you, right? All right, so one of my favorite, favorite phones that I think has aged so well is the Galaxy S20 FE. This phone, it should be coming down in price. It's around 400 bucks, but I think it should be a little cheaper than that, or around like the 350. Um, but this is an excellent phone, guys. The Snapdragon 865 chip is on here, so it's blazing fast. Uh, also, this phone has the 120 hertz display 
on here as well. The only thing about this phone is there's no headphone jack, which I thought they took out prematurely on here, but it does have SD card support. It does have better cameras than uh, the S10 series and the Note 10 Plus. It does have better cameras as far as the quality of the lens uh, goes. It you do, you do see it like a kind of a difference there as far as image quality. So if you do want a pretty good camera, but you don't want to spend a ton of money, right? then I would definitely get this phone. Uh, takes really, really great shots here. It's also got the three times telephoto lens on here as well too. Uh, but like I said, speed wise, this phone very fast. Um, my only thing with this phone is it doesn't feel as premium as the rest of these phones because the back is plastic. Um, but other than that, it's a really good performer and I really do like it. Like I said, pre very good cameras, better than the Note 10 Plus, S10 Plus, better than all of those phones as far as the camera goes, in my opinion. Uh, and like I said, the screen is 120 hertz. So this is always a phone I like to recommend to people. And plus, it's got 5G on it as well. Battery life is pretty good on here too. Um, this is overall a really good performer as well too, especially if you pick it up for the right price. Like I said, the right price for this, you wanna stick around like the four to 350 price range um, and you're, you'll be doing really good. So what's interesting is the S9, Plus and the Galaxy Note 9. I still recommend the Galaxy Note 9 as uh, just an alternative to Motorola's stylus phone. So this is like 200 bucks. If you want a phone with a stylus but you don't want to pay the 400 or you don't want to pay the $1,200 for a new S22 Ultra, this is an extremely good phone still. Now the S9 Plus is also a very good phone, but my issue with this phone is that for the price hasn't come down on this phone. It's still at like the $200 price point. I think this phone should be around like $100 really because being around that $200 price point, I would just get an S10 over this or I would get an S10 Plus. I would not get this phone. And plus Samsung actually cut the um, security patches for this phone. So this phone, I think it's got a, it got its last security patch uh, recently as well to you so that's also another reason so still a very good phone um, but like I said there's no reason to get this the s9 plus over um, you know any of these other s10 phones or note 10 or whatever um, just based on the price I say if you want to get an s9 plus um, definitely you have to pick one up I would say for 130 bucks I wouldn't I wouldn't go over 150 for this phone um, that's just me because 150 bucks if you save another 50 bucks you can get an s10 or s10e so and i think that you'll be happier with that phone uh but the galaxy note this is an awesome phone for anybody that wants a stylus for cheap and also this phone has kind of a unique thing to it like the s9 plus where there's no notch or punch hole which a lot of people prefer um but this is still actually a very good performer as far as your image quality uh it still takes really good photos and the stylus is still pretty accurate on here as well too. So if you're into digital artwork and you want to do it for the cheap, uh, definitely pick this up. The software is way better than something you would get with a Motorola uh, Moto G stylus or something like that. Headphone jack is on board, 1440p display, SD card support, somewhat decent battery life, actually very good cameras, actually surprisingly good cameras on here. Uh, always surprised me. Uh, still, still pretty good. Um, but like I said, this phone, I think this still gets security patch updates, but uh, it should be ending pretty soon, like the S9 Plus. Uh, but I still really like the Galaxy Note 10, and the Galaxy Note 9 for like that $200 price point. I think that's pretty sweet. Um, so yeah, so the only thing about these older flagships is that it's software support, right? So like, if if it bugs you that you know the Note 10 Plus is not gonna get Android uh, 13, um, then I would say, yeah, it's time to maybe spend the money and get like an S22 Ultra, or I wouldn't even say get a Note um, if you, because if software really concerns you, right? Like you don't, you want the next version, because this is gonna end uh, with Android 13, and the S20 FE is gonna end with Android 13. So it would just make sense to just trade your old Samsung phone in if you have one. And just go ahead and get, you know, the newer the newer ones because the newer devices these are gonna get like four years of 
major OS updates and another like five years of security patches. So it would be worth it, but it really depends on you because I could use these phones in the security patch day. Just no, it's no sweat because uh, the value that you're getting for these phones as far as the price and spec ratio, I think is greater than software updates. Uh, but what do you guys think? Be sure to let me know and I'll catch you guys in the next one.